Okay, guys, I am going to talk about PyPlot. So PyPlot is another plot plotting library within Julia that uses the matplotlib functions and backends and all that good stuff. So if you're coming from Python, you're saying, I need this faster comp computation that Julia has, but I like to plot in the Python syntax. Or I just don't want to learn the, the Julia plots library. It's understandable. It's, uh, it takes more time out of your day if you have to learn all this other stuff. And maybe you just want to use matplotlib. So you can do that. In Julia, you're, wanna, you're gonna want to install this package called using pyplot. Pretty much the same idea as using plots, using pyplot, we're gonna call it here. And as you can see, I already have code set up here. Now this code is actually the same exact code that is set up in the example of the Git repository for pyplot. And rather than me creating a whole example and coding it out, I wanted to go through this and go through the syntax of why they're doing certain things and you see they're using semicolons rather than commas or other stuff just because it's also good to know how to read code that you haven't written. Okay, so you can see here they're calling using pyplot and that's just calling the library and the next we're defining our range. So we have a range going from zero to stop equals two times pi and length equals a thousand. All right, so right here, let's, let's talk about this semicolon. Now, when you're getting into functions, there is arguments and then there's keyword arguments. Keyword arguments are arguments that you can call by using some kind of keyword. So in this case, this keyword is stop. When you call this, you it's equals two times pi, and this is the start. So this will go start, stop, and then this is the length. So everything after this semicolon is a keyword argument. You can see he named them both. The length is a thousand, the stop is this, and zero is that. And depending on how the code is designed, maybe the keyword argument is required. Maybe you don't have to type out the keyword argument. We've also done it where I put zero, I could put two pi, and then I just name length. And then this also works. I can do zero, so two pi, comma, length equals a thousand. So this would work fine as well. Okay, now there's this other semicolon here at the end. Now MATLAB does something where if you put semicolons at the end of the script that suppresses output, and then I think it also has some other factors of how it affects the code. In Julia, it's a similar fashion where if you want to suppress the output, it could also signify that you're ending the statement. Now if I put a semicolon there, I can write my next thing. Let's say I wanted the Z equals five over here, then semicolon, and then I can move on with my life. And this would compile fine. It knows that this is the end of the statement, this is a new statement. Okay, now looking at this line. So we have the sign function being called now, and you can see a dot here. So in the last video, I was talking about element-wise operation with multiplication and the addition symbol. And you can also do that with division, and you can do it for raising it to a power, and you can also do it for functions. So if I put the dot and then this, these are the two parentheses, you can see this one and this one, that means I'm doing an element-wise operation on everything inside. And then let's look inside. Now you can see that there's not that many dots compared to what I did. If your math isn't the best and you're, you're not strong with PEMDAS or maybe you got a really confusing function then putting dots on pretty much everything is the safe way to go about it. But if you're trying to optimize your code, then it's good to follow where there are vectors and where they're not vectors. And you put dots where they're actually needed. The more dots you put, the more computations you're requiring of the code. So in here, this dot is needed because cosine needs to be performed 
on every element of this 2 times x. You can see here this 2 times x, this doesn't need a dot because Julia has code that describes how to multiply a scalar to a vector. And that the scalar to a vector is you just scale it by that scalar. And then if you look at this, this is going to output a new vector. So this vector times this scalar, it's going to know what to do there. So this is going to be a whole other vector. And then now if we go over here, this is 3 times another vector. So this is going to be a vector right here. So vector plus a vector, it knows what to do there. So you really don't need any dots besides this one here. And then this giant vector that you get from this, this sign is going to need the dot because it needs to perform on every value on there. And at the end, you can see it calls another semicolon just to suppress output. And now we're getting to plot. And then you can see here the syntax of plot is pretty much the exact same as matplotlib. All right, we have our x and our y. We can change our color. Maybe I want to change it to blue this time. Line width, I want to change that. And line style will make it into a dashed line. And then they gave it a title. So now if I call include, it will be 05-iplot.jl. I run it. Okay. And I made it blue instead of red, but this is this is the line. And now we can see what's going on here. We see our function outputted. And then because this is using the matplotlib library, which is implemented with the Julia REPL, we actually get some interactive mode here. Like you can see here, me moving the cursor, you can see the X, the X and Y uh, changing on the top right. So you can see that. You can do some stuff where if I wanted to save it, I can I can edit the axis axis titles and do some other stuff. And you can edit it all within this window. And you can save it and do whatever you want with it. So that's the matplotlib library. I wanted to go through this simple example, but because they have some syntax differences, I thought it's it's always good to know how to read other people's code because that is also the game of computer science. You're going to be getting code from someone else, and then you're going to have to know how to read it line by line. What is this person doing? What do they mean? Sometimes when someone comments, they think they've put enough information, and really they haven't. Or maybe they put a lot of information, and it's great. Okay, so that is the end of this. I want to show the call for PyPlot and how it works. You can see I called it within the Julia REPL, and the, that was actually the first time I called it in the REPL, and you saw it took a couple seconds. Uh, I think that took about 10 seconds. It's about twice as fast as the plots library, and then once you have it in, it will call it pretty quickly as well. See, that came out faster. And then once you stay in the REPL, it works fine. It works fine. Okay, so this was an alternate ending to the basic series. If you don't like the plots library and you want to use matplotlib, then this is was this was me showing how you can call it and how you can work with it. I am next going to go into a more intermediate series where I'll go into how to make modules, make functions, and do some more complex things. And then I'll continue from there. So hopefully this series is good for you guys and I will see you around.